Welcome to the 1888 Building Advisory Committee meeting of Friday, August 9, 2024, 10 a.m. This meeting will be held in hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda uh, should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. The meeting will be held in person in the main meeting room, actually in the uh, uh, conference room off the main meeting room and Deerfield Municipal Offices in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 30A. Anyone intending to record the meeting must identify themselves uh, and provide their name and address for the record. So, I'll the meeting the order and the uh, first item is to review the minutes from previous meetings. I think uh, Christopher had started to do that and we have physical copies for you guys who are out there. But if you've done it electronically. Um, <laughs> so the first uh, set of minutes was from Tuesday, April 29, 2024. Um, so could I have a, unless there are changes, could I get a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. All right, uh, moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Okay, roll call vote. All those in favor of approving the minutes from April 29. Kim Hilchey, aye. Aye. Mr. Don, aye. Julia Chalfin, aye. Kern? Aye. Joe? Aye. All right. Um, and did I hear that everyone has had a chance to do the uh, minutes from our previous meeting on August 20th or July 26th? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, can I get a motion to approve if there's no changes? So moved. Second? Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. There's no further discussion. All those in favor? Um, Kim Hilchey, aye. Mr. Verdun, aye. Vern, Joe. aye. Joe Matty, aye. All right, it's uh, unanimous. Thank you. All right, so over to you guys, Charles and Jeff, for the next. All right, panel. well, okay, so discuss parking and circulation and campus master planning. Um, so, Jeff, you sent out a site plan to us last week that started to look at the uh, uh, the, the uh, police garage bay, right? Right. Okay. Um, um, I, I can bring that up. Okay, great. Yeah, so, I mean, part of this and understanding, you know, what sort of circulation patterns and, um, you know, uh, modifications wanted to happen associated with the 1888 building, um, you know, it obviously prompted the discussion about, you know, adjacent uh, adjacent sites and circulation, and then understanding that there was a plan for an addition um, to the garage off the existing uh, town hall building. And so, uh, and speaking with Charles, just tried to develop some, um, some uh, response to that and think about, um, yeah, just parking needs and circulation in general and a way to uh, potentially um, just, uh, I guess, clean up some of the um, existing um, circulation patterns. So this right. um, this envision keeping that curb cut off of North Main coming into the site with parking, you know, to your left against the building. Um, and then this one broke out into two separate parking lots, um, one facing the 1888 uh, addition and then the other um, you know, serving the garage building. Um, and this was really without knowing too much about um, the program or um, anticipated, um, you know, construction for the for the garage. So um, right. Charles and I, I think, you know, we've talked about some some changes some potential modifications to this, but this was at least um, something to get the conversation started. Right. Yeah, and then and then what you know, Jeff wasn't a part of the conversation that, that we had had, but but my understanding is this is actually a drive-through garage from north to south for for the police, right? Mm -hmm. 
So, so this site plan doesn't really reflect that. Yeah. And also the, the addition is a little bigger than I think it needs to be. I think Jeff is showing something like almost 60 feet out here and a three bay garage. I mean, when I'm not the, we're not the architects for this, but in my thinking, a three bay garage needs to be about, you know, 14 feet wide at bay. So for, you know, maybe it's 42 feet wide, 60 feet long. And that allows you to sort of tighten up this, 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 parking here so it's more so it's a single loaded parking lot instead of a, instead of like two single loaded double loaded parking lot as opposed to two single loaded parking lots mm -hmm. and right. and i just and we ha and i've got some some you know 3d rendering images we can look at that sort of show show how that how that would appear um yeah i think we're probably going to have to officially ask the police to come into our next meeting and talk about this so we can nail it down um mm -hmm. yes. until that's nailed down everything you're doing is kind of like okay these are nice ideas but um so does that make sense yeah it does it does and then i'm also you know also just thinking about site costs in general is that you know there's parking that's going to be created for the the new senior center the 1888 building and the police station and maybe there's a way that all three of those projects can can fund the overall site package here um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know how that would work if we're if, if almost, that would almost require the site package to be a standalone bid project that's funded by those three other projects but maybe there's a pathway for that mm -hmm. it'd be cheaper to do it that way that's for sure and it would make yeah. a more unified response to right i mean right I like that. Yeah. yeah and it gets to the whole idea of like planning a campus it's not it's not about one building it's about the way these three or four buildings inter are going to interact Right. Yeah. And the library, um, we're going to tie in across the back of that yeah. church building. Mm -hmm. Is that happening? It's something that we should explore. It doesn't make sense not to explore it. Right? Yeah. Well, this doesn't yeah. preclude that. I mean, this 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 has a perfect alignment right. to create a street right. through the back here. Right. Right. Exactly. And as, and as part of our planning process, we were involved in the um, the senior center project and obviously are, are aware of some of those um, proposals. So, yeah, I think it, as Charles said, it really makes sense to think of, you know, all of these adjacent sites and uses, um, you know, coherently so that we can lay out something that, um, you know, works for for all of all the buildings. Right. So I, I reached out to EDM Studio, who is the. Uh, designer on the senior center feasibility study, which involves the 1821 church there. Um, mm -hmm. So they're not, they're not quite at the point where they're ready to talk about parking. Um, but I did say, hey, if you guys want to attend one of these meetings soon. Um, so I think if we're getting closer to September, they might be ready to, you know, bring their ideas to the table in terms of parking. Um, and then between P3, Berkshire Design, and Q and Riddle, I think we'll have pretty good sense of what are the needs for the campus. Okay. Is there a Great. rough timeline on when the police edition is going to happen or is it just a discussion at this point? I mean, um, <laughs> he, uh, the police chief hasn't said um, he has aspirations, but it hasn't come to the town yet. Okay. Uh, so that's another thing that we could try to nail down is, you know, uh, and as this work envisioned, um, is he trying to get a public safety grant? I don't know. That's all of these questions are good questions, but uh, you know, in order to answer them, we need to have them in the room. Right? I mean, worst case scenario, we just leave the pad. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. So um, between Christopher and I, we'll try to coordinate with. Uh, it sounds like EDM Studio might be further out, but um, yeah, we try to. When we set the date, go ahead. No, I was just going to ask: Jeff, is, is Berkshire Design Group working with EDM on the Senior Center? Um, I believe we are. This Rachel has been handling most of that effort, but I think, um, yeah, I think we've certainly been in touch with them. So, um, you know, we can we can certainly reach out All on right. our own. Yeah. We'd rather go through you. Yeah. <clears throat> Maybe it would make sense to try and have some kind of like a co like a um, a collective meeting with the architects working on the police station, us and EDM and Berkshire Design, so we could just work on this as a as a group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and and 
does it make more sense to try to do that offline and and uh, and then have our group get together to to review what or do you want to do it with us in the room? I mean, we could, um, you, it might be more efficient if you're just talking with professionals, but up to you. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that's fine if 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 the town's comfortable with 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 us taking the lead on that and trying to come up with a you know a coherent vision that we could mm -hmm. present to the town. I mean that that seems like it makes sense. Okay. Um what do you think, Christopher? That, yeah that, that sounds good. So um I can forward everyone's contact information. Like I said, EDM studio isn't quite at the point where they're ready to talk about parking and circulation. Um, mm -hmm. but at least you'll have their info and I'll certainly nudge them along to make sure they're reaching out. Uh, when they are ready to have that conversation. And then the other thing I would note is they've got uh, Lifespan as their senior specific consultant. Um, and I think he said in that interview, you know, parking, parking, parking is, you know, he, he really wants to see a lot. Um, right. Mm -hmm. So accessible and accessible. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's definitely going to be <laughs> something he's bringing to the table. So, yeah. Have you seen this? Ask a couple questions. Mm -hmm. um, where are we on senior housing? Uh, yeah, so so Berkshire Design has been doing the kind of master plan for that. Um, at this point, I think we're going to be putting out an RFP um, in the spring to do the St. James. You know, depending on how this project works out, there might be an opportunity also to look at this site. Joint thing, which would be more attractive to developers. Um, but that's that's where we're at for the moment, and the next step is at town meeting in the fall on that October seventh day. We need to formally allow the select board to dispose of the St. James property. Um, and then the library would be the only other thing. I, I'm just thinking that yeah. if we make this nice, beautiful plan and then take down the building that we're sitting in and put in senior housing without having thought about that as and input to this. Right. Um, it's a very what if -y kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so my my suggestion mm -hmm. would be that you know we move forward with what we're doing here, but you you should probably make Berkshire Design the lead on the site. You should bid the site uh, thirty thirty nine M and not one forty nine. What that means. <laughs> so, yeah, but, so what it mean what it, what it means is that you won't get you won't get all the markups from the general contractor. So the site guys do do horizontal work okay. more efficiently and cheaper. And Berkshire Design is doing all the horizontal design. If they can get the input from the library, get the input from 21 and the input from 88. Yeah. I think that's the direction we should go. Yeah. We should focus on our, our plot. And, and and realize that the parking okay. situation is going to be a town wide area because you, you will get far better. Do you know what I'm saying, Charles? Yeah, that's a great idea. Yep. I think that makes a lot it's of gonna sense. Keep this, yeah, this, it's going to keep the site number honest. Yeah, all the bid laws yeah. around yeah. the horizontal it's, it's, it's stuff. Is, right. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I remember from sitting in on one of my OPM trainings that I was taking that the, the horizontal work is 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 bid differently than than the vertical and it, it is more efficient right. and less expensive mm -hmm. to do it that way. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. Sure. Great. Thank you. Um okay, so <clears throat> so we'll, anyway. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm so, I'm, no, I'm sorry, Tim. I didn't I didn't mean uh, to cut you off. We got this time lag, so just as I think, oh he's not gonna talk, you know, so <laughs> so you you, you yeah. keep going. Okay. Well, so we wanted to, uh, you know, next thing on the agenda is discussing the application to the, the uh, Community Preservation Committee. So we started to put together a package that's a, that's a combination of, of, of images and, and presentation plans for the, for the CP, CPC, but also yeah. looking, you know, you know, thinking more, you know, about make also making it the schematic design package that's going to be priced out. So I just want to walk you through the drawings that we have. Um, but first, I think I'm just going to show you what we came up with for the um, for kind of the site because 
So we, we started to model in the church and the and the, the municipal building here. And what we were looking at was we took Jeff's plan and and just and made this just like a double loaded parking lot, which which allows some green space in here and the drive through, you know, garage bay along here. This parking obviously would extend along the building. But something like this, you know, allows this parking lot, you know, to be th thought of, you know, as a separate piece, you know, that serves the senior center and and probably the perhaps the 1888 building. But that was, I just wanted to give you folks an image of, of 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 sort of what we the next step that we took in looking at Jeff's site plan, and then also how this thing is starting to look, how our building is starting to look in comparison to sort of the buildings around it. So, um, getting back to so. We hit, we, you know, we're starting, we, our first, we have a title sheet here that has kind of that, you know, the, the, the image for, you know, the entry of the building kind of, you know, grabs your attention and lets you know what this project is about. Um, is everybody looking, is everybody seeing the PDF here? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, great. Yes. And then, um, uh, let me just make sure it's, okay, there we go. And then uh, um, we have, the, the site, Jeff's site plan we were just looking at, just to give it some context. Um, I think I think for for the purposes of what we're talking about now, this is probably adequate for for the CPA. Jeff, what do you think? Yeah, I think we would add some labels and um, a few notes, but uh, generally, I think yeah, the overall site plan is is pretty well developed. Does does it make sense to try and um, modify it so that it just shows this is like a a, a single double loaded parking area and yes. Yeah, I think we should foot. sync up. Yep, sync up with your plans and and have the two be coordinated so we can do that. Okay, okay. Um, and then these are these are starting to these are the schematic design pricing plans that we're we're starting to block out. So this is the basement level of the eighteen eighty eight building with the footprint of our building shown in, in dash lines on the left. Um, we've got the first floor plan. Um, we've made some changes based on our uh, our, our meeting um, uh, two weeks ago, which I'll go over in a minute. But I'm just gonna, I'm just going to sort of walk you through what this package has. Yeah. Um, second floor plan, um, attic plan. This this will wind up being, you know, we're going to be creating some kind of a mechanical penthouse up in this upper level of the uh, attic level of the existing building. But it's important to show it as part of the, you know, in context of the overall project. Um, we have our, you know, building elevations. And then, um, then we wanted to include sort of the, uh, the, the more design oriented, uh, fit out plans, the furnishing plans, which, which, um, which help, I think they help, they help people understand how the building is going to be used, how it's going to be furnished. That in fact, these spaces are, are functional and, and work for the program, um, we don't have to include the more technical looking floor plans for the for the uh, community preservation um, application. I, I guess I'd be interested in P3's thoughts about that, having, you know, these plans submitted versus, um, oops, sorry, versus, you know, these these type of floor plans. I don't think we need both, but is one or the other. Yeah. Yeah, I... I... I think they're going to, I think they're going to want uh, descriptions of what, you know, a narrative. Well, I don't think it'll matter either way, which way you go. I don't think they need color. Okay. But this, these plans sort of help show how the spaces are being used um, and, to, and how they're being furnished. And they sort of mm -hmm. show how the departments lay out and function within the building. I don't know if the C. I don't know if this, the the CPC is interested in that or or not. Yeah, my thinking is that, <clears throat> I mean, they are interested in what the use of the building, but they're more concerned about being sure that the CPC money is spent on the yeah on the eighteen eighty eight building yeah. itself, so. and obviously the elevator factors into that to make it eighty eight compliant, et cetera. So right, which either or. I mean, okay. Well, I, what I think, what I think we should do, Charles, um, to comply with the warrant on this, the warrant article on this is, once you 
once you have the detailed estimate, um, I'll have um, I'll have Mary go through it and write up and segregate the costs that are related to CPC so that when we go to CPC, they're looking at what is in their warehouse and not having to deal with anything else. Okay. And showing that we have a good solid handle on what is CPC Correct. and what isn't right. and that we can keep it separate. Yeah. Um, the the elevator. Um, do we have a do we have a other than pointing on the building, Charles? Uh, if there's a way we can uh, get rid of the uh, files of bid masonry, I really would like to do that. Yeah, I talked to our structural <laughs> engineer about that, and and he's not going to know until he does a more in depth sort of lateral analysis of the building whether or not we're going to need the elevator shaft for for shear or not. Okay. Um, All right. I mean, I, I I totally understand the reason for for doing it, you know, as a as a wood frame shaft, and and I think we want to go that way if we can, and I want to push our engineer in that direction, but it's still it's still a question mark at this or, point. Yeah, either that or uh, you know, a drywall CH studs with uh, core core board is you know works too. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll just. Like I said, I want to. I'll, I'll try and push him in that direction, but we're not. We're not mm -hmm. quite there yet. Got it. Every fall, somebody that we can get rid of. We make money. Mm -hmm. We have the second floor plan, um, and then we have these exterior images. So this is this is kind of looking at that that entry image again here. This is kind of I kind of like the way that this one works, showing the the sort of the form of the church, you know, versus versus our building, and kind of helps sort of frame it and create mm -hmm. some nice some nice context, I think. Um, and then we have these two views um, from the front, and so that is the package that we've put together for the for the CPC. Okay. Um... Yeah, so we have one interior rendering too, Charles. No. Oh, right. Sorry, Karen. <laughs> yeah, we have, we have our, our meeting room rendering here as well. Great. Yeah. Um, I was just going to say, timeline wise, we have an initial meeting with CPC on August 14. I don't know whether you think we're going to have several meetings. So we probably should. I don't know, talk about should you come to the second meeting to do this presentation? We have a rough yeah, one. I think we should not have the architect in the first meeting. I think we yeah. should go to the first meeting and discuss only process and, right. you know, that we are working on it. Uh, you're going to get a report as required by the article right. uh, from Mary, and uh, we'll, we'll, we're going to have a whole package for you, including segregated costs. Uh, when we when we do our formal presentation with you in, in a month or two. Yeah, well, yeah, we're CBC has got to make their decision well, oh, in, well in advance of the uh, annual time, the uh, special town meeting. So they they have to make it, you know, in the next month, right? So well, yeah, well, we're not going to have the detailed cost estimate mm -hmm. until probably well, the third, week, third week in September. Yeah, so we we basically I think. The warrant has the warrant will be okay. We have to close it by like the twentieth of August, September, but in order to meet the deadlines that the state requires. But but that's okay. Um, what we need to do is get CPC buy-in on. We know that the segregated costs. Um, we're going to be putting money from the federal grant into the overall project, and CPC money is not going to bleed over into any area where it can't be. Spent by statute. So if you if you're worried about timing, then you should probably present this on the 14th and let us go talk about the financing and segregation. And then we'll just tell them the truth. But we just don't have the numbers to the detail point. They're gonna come. You're gonna be able to segregate it out and know right. what CPA is paying for. So that there's no no uh, no chance of uh, of uh, crossover. Right. This does August 14 work for you guys? Well, I'm out next week, unfortunately. Okay. I believe it or not, I'm out next week too. So, I mean, CPC, um, this is 
this is not their normal cycle. So what I can do is reach out to the chair and ask, um, you know, can we do like a meeting on, on the 20th or something um, uh, of August? Uh, when, when, are, when are the people that need to be in this discussion going to be around? Um, was it, is this an evening meeting or a daytime meeting? Evening, probably. People work. Uh, okay. 21st, 21st yes. is a select meeting. Uh, 20th. Works too, and it can be there. There's going to be a Zoom component, so um, yeah. I mean, what's crap. nice? Yeah, what's nice about Zoom is that everybody can. It's it's easier to sort of make a presentation on Zoom at this point. It's just because everybody's. I, I agree, but I, I I think I think the face to face with the uh, CPA might be helpful too. All right. Sorry. Well, I we're happy to do that too. We can we can put the presentation on a thumb drive, and if there's a, you know, if it would. Is it going to be in that meeting room where we had the interview? We can put things up on the monitor and. Yeah, yeah. So we'll have all the fun things about the sun flashing onto the screen and making it hard to see stuff. But yeah, yeah. Well, maybe if it's, a, if it's an evening meeting, as <laughs> later yeah. off in the summer. <laughs> yeah, maybe. It's gonna be... Well, yeah. I mean, if we're talking August twentieth, it's still going to be a, a small problem. But yeah, we'll just deal with it. It's the the issues. Why we want to make a news town office right so it works for people right um, and this one doesn't really work so we're, are we going with the 20th or do we want to that's what i'm to trying to nail down okay. can we suggest uh august 28th as a backup date sure finance committee meeting <laughs> in there is that kick on five years early yeah so um, and all this is subject to the CPC being available. So we're talking about when we're available and then you have to confirm it with them. Yeah. Well, I can make, I can make the 20th or the 28th work. <clears throat> okay. So, yeah. Right after this meeting, I'll, I'll reach out to chair and see um and what's the best timing wise i i don't know uh they may want to do it 6 30 to 7 so i'll check on that but right now i'm just going to put both dates in my calendar tentatively so i don't forget okay and then the 28th so there's a finance committee meeting at five yeah, and so that then it would definitely mean CPC would have to do seven o'clock. This is a we have got a lot. You got a lot to do. In, okay. Yeah, again, I got stuck on this. The funniest meetings again. Why did you bring that up? I raised too much money. Do you have any feedback on this presentation? Is this um, the right content? Is there anything we should add or take out? It seems like if the focus is on the 1888 building, the original building, maybe we want some views kind of more focused on that building as well instead I, of just the addition. Think, yeah, I mean, I'm not so sure that we need focused views on it more than I think they're going to need to know descriptively. I think everyone in town knows the 1888 building. And the CPC has been studying it for 120 years. So I, th I think that it would be important to have, you know, bullet point descriptions on what we're doing on the exterior, uh, quality windows that are going to go in as replacement, uh, things of that nature, I think will be helpful with CPC. Right. Uh, obviously, everything on the interior will be eligible. Um, and the elevator on the other building will be eligible. So I don't think we're going to have a problem hitting the targeted goal for, on the financial side. But, but I do think that we need to have the written description uh, that you're probably going to be giving to the estimator, uh, you know, to help them uh, with, with their quantitative takeoff. Right. Right. We're, pl we're actually planning on using the, uh, the, the, if a lot of the information that was developed in the BHNA study in terms of the masonry, the mold, the uh, the hazmat, um, we have that roofing, um, you know, uh, quote that we've got. So, 
you know, that's a lot of what we're going to be using for developing our cost estimate. Um, and we can ref yeah. we can reference those documents and. Are you doing the uh, cost estimate internally, Charles, or are you? No, we have a we have a cost estimator. We've we've on the team. Uh, Edie wow. Ambrose from Structures by Design. I don't know if you're familiar with okay. her or not. No, I'm not. Yeah. I wouldn't use this picture actually because this is not funded by CPC. Right. So I would just take this one out. Hey. As lovely as it is. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I, I don't know if this is easily done or if it's advisable, but I mean, if you if you were basically showing the old, the existing building and you just lopped off the new construction and most of the images, like the floor plan of what's going to go into the, I, I'm just throwing out an idea here because then you can see more um, of like what's going into the first floor, what's going into the second floor, what's well, going to... well, the elevator? The elevator is eligible. Yeah, I know it is eligible, but I mean, we we're going to say the elevator is eligible to make it ADA compliant. It's going to be in the new structure linked by this glass thing. Right. You know, I'm, I'm agnostic. You know, whatever you guys think is the right way to go is fine. I mean, on the one hand, yeah. we're trying to take out the new construction. On the other hand, we need to in, have the new construction involved. So. Whatever works is I'm fine with. I think it's important to show yeah. the context that the 1888 building is going to be redeveloped in, which is which is the new building and the elevator. But what we can do is is we can we can graphically, you know, put a zipper line down the building and say, you know, this is this is what's getting funded by by CPA money, and this is what's you know this is the construction yeah. cost for the new building, and then we can put it like a little bubble around the elevator saying partially funded by CPC money, you know. Yeah. So it's very clear. You do a bike Oh, that's fine. Are there upgrades to the mechanicals that fall within the CPA monies? Excuse me? Are the up are there upgrades to the mechanical systems that are included in CPA money? Another yes. aside from the elevator, heating, cooling, that sort of thing. Yeah, everything, everything that's yes specific to the old building that's mechanical um, is definitely uh, it's it's an adaptive reuse project. It's not a strict historical preservation project. So um, yeah, new electrical, new plumbing, new all of that stuff is CPC um, fungible. Insulation. Everything. Good, good, good. I'll get it to the number for me. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Even if I have to redo the estimate sheet myself, I'll get it to the number. <clears throat> I would think you would want as much as possible on the CPC amount. Absolutely. Yeah. Like everything that can be, and it should be more than the CPC can fund. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And that's the rough estimates that you've given already. Also, you know, soft costs to design, you know, the percentage that's specific to the uh, you know, elevator design, tying the building together, the, the work on the old building, you know, we we can break out those things specific to CPC funding. Because, you know, the, the rough the rough budget you've already developed shows that the, the federal dollars are going to be supplementing what's going on in the old building. And we just need to continue to show that and, and prove it. Do you, have, do you have a copy of the grant? Yeah, I can send that to you. Can you send to me? So I want to see if there's any particulars that I'm worried about. Yeah, well, we'll get to the USDA part in a second. So. Okay. <laughs> so. Anything else on the CPC application and the cost estimate?
And one thing we can do is um, we haven't, we're, we're finalizing the things that we were thinking we would do at the uh, first meeting uh, with the CPC. We can share them with Karen or Charles just to get feedback or everyone uh, just to get feedback and say, okay, this makes sense. This just so you can see the actual application. Yeah, he's signing in again. There. Yeah. <laughs> oh, maybe he's going. He's to bringing in <laughs> yeah. he, he had this problem last meeting where he froze. Couldn't do yeah. anything. I think he's frozen. You can see the block. No, it's, it's weird. weird. It's like a, I think there was a lot of background yeah, yeah, noise. Hello? 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 Oh, hi. Yeah, sorry about that. My computer froze up. Uh, no worries. Yeah. So I was just saying that we're going to send some um, application materials to the CPC so you can see what's in our application um, and advise us if we need to change some wording. Oh, I just disappeared. Oh, no, he just turned off his camera. Yeah. I'm here. OK, um, so next item on here is just to discuss USDA. Um, so as a reminder to everyone, we got a $4 million grant thanks to our congressional delegation. Um, the story with that grant is we need to actually access those funds by applying to the USDA Community Facilities Fund. Um, so Karen and Charles, I believe you guys had an opportunity to meet with um, and Korea from USDA, and then also, I'm not sure if their environmental compliance person was there as well. Yes, um, I believe so. Right, and so that, and so there was an environmental checklist that had to be filled out, but there's a lot of site information on that actually that I think Berkshire Design Group is going to be able to help out on, but it's a. Uh, you know, it, it it is a process, and and one question I have is just who's who's driving that? Yeah. So so what I was going to suggest is, um, you know, we we made the committee aware of that process, um, and I think the goal is to have because we can't actually apply for those funds until special town meeting has provided the you know authorization to move forward with the CPA funds. Uh -huh. um, so the application time frame is, you know, October, early November. Um, but obviously, we'd like to have everything kind of ready to go at that point. Um, so why don't we, after after this committee meeting adjourns, maybe you know, you, me, and and P three can just discuss, you know, how are we breaking this out? Um, because there's certainly some items in there that it makes sense for. The architect to be taken care of. There's other things that probably make sense for the town to be taken care of, and we just need to to go through it really quick if that's okay. Yep. Do you want to do that today after this meeting? Is that what you're suggesting? Yeah. If if you guys want to stick around after the the uh, committee meeting adjourns momentarily, okay. we can talk All right, about Jeff, that. Are you available for that, Jeff? Sure. Okay. Yeah, because the next item is setting the next meeting date, so and. Um, I'm not sure I can add anything to the USDA application discussion. So yeah, it's, it's fairly technical. Probably yeah, typical federal government. So um, I know we're we're moving rapidly ahead with this. So um, timing on the next meeting for this group um, should it be relatively soon? Or you're away next week, Charles? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so what about early the following week? Uh, before we're meeting on the 20th, we should meet on the 19th. Yes, yeah, we'll yeah, have a we'll yeah. Have a yeah. So um, Monday the 19th. Rob, well, you, you'll be fresh back. I'll be yeah, back. Good. Your hands up. No, is that a is that that somebody else's? Uh, no, that's the person. Cursor. That's the cursor. It looks like he's busy with these races. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's cool. Uh, <laughs> so, is ten o'clock good on the nineteenth for everyone? We've right. actually we've actually got um, EDM Studio is here to do their site visits for the mechanical systems in the various buildings that they're looking at, including eighteen twenty one. 
um, and that that is in the morning. Um, so I don't know if we have time <laughs> that afternoon. Um, let me see. Yeah, they're yeah. spin off. They see going forces originally with EDM, and then they went what, off to do their own designer thing. So. What block of time do you have for them? Uh, let's see, it's like eight to noon. Let me just double check though, because yeah, because I I start having meetings on around three thirty that, so I could do noon to two. The good news about the CPC is they're very familiar with the concept of this project, and it's uh, really more of educating them about the specifics of the direction change that we made from the previous time we were going to apply uh, for the final construction. Yeah, they, know it's, they know it's coming. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. But they get boxes to check, too. Right, right. And obviously, uh, a lot of this stuff we're anticipating is stuff that's actually going to happen if the town voters approve going forward with the project. But we want to have everything um, everything ready for them. So, oh, the rain. That rain, but that the air conditioning. <laughs> I think it's the rain. <coughs> So does noon work for all of us on the 19th? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep, that works. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Great. The other, the, I know it's not on the agenda, but one of the things to discuss is the whole, is the uh, historic um, submission and and when, when, when in the process that's happening. I'm assuming that that's kind of happening once once that's a, the that's a 30 that's a 30 day re re returnable child so yeah I'd, I'd like to try and get that in in the next week or two so that it's returned prior to town meeting so i just mentioned so usda includes that in their environmental review and i think they're the ones who want to submit the project information form to shipo to 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 a state to, yeah to the state shipo yeah really and that's actually how we ended up doing it on this Leary Lab project. FHWA ended up submitting the project info to the SHPO. And that's okay. Well, yeah. So okay. It, it, we, we can go over it, but I think, and luckily, we're not going to have to do it, it seems like. So it's not a high form. No. We don't want them to return a request. Well, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we want to control what goes in so that we can. Kind of Get the well, we'll we're back. providing the information to USDA, but USDA is the one who's going to be formally submitting the, the request to SHPO. So. so in order to meet, um, we've got to get it in September sometime, right? Or, or the end of September. I mean, we, we don't want to get this like the day before the uh, town meeting. Where the, we, if, if USDA is submitting it, it's going to have that. They're gonna to have to submit it after town meeting. Oh, they're gonna okay. Meeting. Yeah, unfortunately. But it's so. yeah. I mean, it, it's either they're gonna find that we have to do something, and that might change the cost, or they're gonna find that there's no issue. Right. And if they found no issue in the, but they like to take the time. They're for they take goal. the thirty days. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So so the whole so the USDA submission, which includes the historic review happens after town meeting I, I gotta see what he's talking about what form he's talking about because I, I I want to make sure it's not the same form that I think we have to do for mass historic because mass historic's form is just a simple you know we, you know request and they'll either come back and say we want more information or we want you to dig an archaeological bay, mm -hmm. or we want you to, you know, right. de-lead the uh, rocks in the basement. You know, you, you'd be surprised what they come back at. When we well, met with um, when we met with the USDA, there was two two documents they said that we would have to do. One was the environmental document. That's about um, it's an environmental report, basically about you know floodplains and endangered species and all that. 
And then the second one was the section 106, they called it. And that was kind of a description and schematic of what's proposed. And then, yes, they, they do the general letter to the Mass Historic and the Native American groups in um, the archaeological digging, all that. So um, they did confirm that. So this is part of the USDA discussion. Yes. So can we? Yeah, I would say. Adjourn and, and let you guys. Focus yeah, let us yeah. let us deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. Can okay. I ask a question? Sure. Is for the next meeting about information sessions for public information sessions. Yeah, we had. Uh, Maybe we put that on the agenda for the next meeting for getting those scheduled. Yeah, we need to get those scheduled because we need to educate. The yeah, Christopher and I had, them. had tentatively suggested some dates, but yeah, we definitely need to nail them down. October 7. Okay. Yeah, the, the reason why is because the national election, um, the, the clerk was worried that, you know, she's got to do a bunch of preliminary stuff and people are starting early voting starts, et cetera. Okay. Uh, so the stage. Right. National. October 7, November 5th. So early oh, voting so starts. That. Yeah. Jeez. I know we have a state, don't we have a state primary in mm -hmm. September? We do, yeah. What was it early in September? Apparently that's the it's least here. of the worries. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be that one clerk that's not kind of quick enough. Yeah, and then she has the certification process after me and the fifth and better. So okay, so we're all good. Yeah. Uh, so motion to adjourn. Uh, second, unless anyone has any further thoughts. Uh, uh, roll, roll call vote. All those in favor? Vern? Aye. Um, Joe? Aye. Chris? Aye. Julie? Aye. Tim? Aye. All right, thanks.